Good morning, everyone. I am back with a what I eat in a day video because I have been cooking at home a lot more. And for today's breakfast, I'll be making an acai bowl. And please do not click out of the video just yet. I know every YouTuber makes an acai bowl for breakfast, but dude, I never make one. I'm just craving something really refreshing, and so that's what I'm gonna make. My first ingredient is this acai pack. I got this before the pandemic really went rampant. So we'll put it in here. If you can get your hands on this, I mean, absolutely do it. Acai has so many antioxidants. I decided to get the unsweetened version because this ripe banana is really going to sweeten things up. So I'm just gonna use the entire thing, whatever. So this is an experiment, but I'm just gonna toss in the last remaining bits of my spinach. Like spinach has this uncanny ability to taste like nothing in smoothies. I'm really trying to cram my body with like nutritious food, so I thought that this would do the trick. All right, so let's blend this baby. Look at that texture, it's perfect. You can't even see it in my bowl. <laughs> For aesthetic reasons, I'm gonna transfer my smoothie mixture into a white bowl because you really can't see anything. So I have no other fruit other than more bananas. I'm gonna cut really thin slices. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this because there's like a full banana in there. But we want it to look pretty, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna decorate it like such. Perfect! So now for my toppings, I'm gonna get some musili. This is always such a hard word to say. I'm just gonna apply that a little bit right over here, just so we've got some texture, some crunch, so it's not just slime. And then I'm gonna add some black chia seeds. And now I'm just gonna throw in some random stuff that's in my pantry. My mom gave me like 40 packs of these Today Kids Nuts. I just get a deep satisfaction when I use up things in my pantry. It's just fun, you know? Got some almonds, and then a bit of walnut. And then I don't even want to add these dried cranberries because there's already just, there's already a lot of sugar in here. Dried cranberries are a silent killer. You think that you're just health, like eating healthy sugar, but there's just so much sugar condensed into these. It's insane. So yeah, that's it. This is my acai bowl with spinach hidden inside. Let's have a bite. Mm, mm-hmm. My theory is confirmed. You cannot taste the spinach at all. Mm hmm It's so crazy. You just blend it right in and it just it vanishes. It just and then just makes it super nutrient dense. It is lunchtime. I am starving. I am craving something a little bit dirty, a little bit naughty. I'm gonna make spam fried rice. This is definitely a throwback for me because growing up, my mom would make us spam fried rice and it was always so delicious. I mean, back in the day, like this was the food item that was in everybody's pantry. We're gonna use my brother's recipe, which is so simple. I wanted to use as little as ingredients as possible because we want a ration right now. So we don't need much onion. I'm just gonna maybe do a quarter of it and that's good. And then I'm gonna put the rest of this onion in a little Tupperware so I can use it for later. And then for this onion, I'm just gonna cut it very finely. Okay, I'm gonna transfer this into a little bowl. Oh my god, my eyes are burning. We have the Spam. I am only gonna use a little bit of it. I don't need a lot. We don't know what's in here. I just want that much. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing, cut it into little bite-sized pieces. All right, let's start frying. All right, so I'm gonna add the onions first. Remember when I was in middle school, I was obsessed with watching Rachel Ray. She would always say, put in the onions when the pan is screaming hot. And I always loved the way she described screaming hot because it does sound like the pan is screaming. I'm just gonna fry the onions until they look more translucent. Now I'm gonna add the Spam. Oh, that smells delicious. You know, I like how I said, oh, I'm gonna use a little bit of the Spam. I actually think that this is like a full portion of Spam. The things are looking a little bit more golden. I'm gonna add some minced garlic just to add a little extra flavor. So ideally, you're trying to get the Spam as crispy as possible. If I could go back in time, I would have fried the Spam first. So everything's looking nice and golden. 
I'm gonna add some rice now. I made this rice a couple days ago. I just like to keep it in the fridge so when I want it, I could just have it. Add this guy in. Okay. I'm just gonna let this kind of like heat up on the pan so it's easier to break. Normally for fried rice, people put in like soy sauce and sesame oil, but no, we are just gonna add one ingredient and it is oyster sauce. The oyster sauce gives such like a beautiful, sweet flavor, but it's also super savory. It's freaking delicious. So we're gonna add, I think like a spoonful of this. And then if we need to add more, we'll add more later. I kinda wish I made more. Okay, she's ready. I want an egg to go with it. All right, so while we're waiting for the egg, I'm just gonna prepare some green onions. I have no idea why my egg has that white part. I omitted it in the B-roll shots because it didn't make the cut, unfortunately. Let's have a bite. I wanna get a little bit of everything. Mmm, this literally tastes like childhood, man. All the rice needs is literally the oyster sauce. I'm telling you. And the green onions are coming through with that crunch, man. Ooh, obviously you can make this uh, fried rice a lot more nutritious by adding broccoli, zucchini, carrots, any type of veggies. And you can cook it without the spam as well. This would just be a really good fried rice recipe. Mmm. I like how on the previous clip I was like, acai bowl for health. And now I'm like literally eating spam out of a can. It is dinner time and I'll be cooking kimchi jjigae. That sounds so bomb right now. Kimchi jjigae is like a kimchi stew. And I decided to make this because I have a lot of just old kimchi in my fridge. I've got this old jar and this container and they are ready to be made into soups. Uh, old kimchi is actually perfect and ideal for kimchi jjigae. So if you've got any old kimchi in your fridge, it's time to use them. So I'm using the onion from earlier today and I'm just gonna quarter it. The onions don't need to be fine because we're just throwing it in a soup and it's just gonna get nice and soft and mushy. You're also gonna need tofu. I am eating the soft one because I love soft tofu. I think we've already established that from the previous video. Feel free to use like medium, firm, whatever tickles your fancy. Okay, I'm just gonna drain this. This is just soaking wet. God. All right. Wait. This is a lie. Oh my God, look how firm that is. What the freak? It says soft on the packaging, but this is literally the most firm tofu. Okay, what can you do? I'm just gonna slice the tofu. Ideally, I would like to put all of it, but I don't know if it'll fit. I'm gonna make a nice little rectangle shape. That's like pretty much all the prep you need. I'm gonna oil it up just a wee bit. And now we are going to fry this tuna. This tuna is specifically for kimchi jjigae. You can't get any more blunt than that. Oh, but you can also use regular canned tuna as well. I must say that the tuna for kimchi jjigae can, that has more like, it has more like juices in it. As you can see, there's like this red oil. It just tastes more dank, if you know what I mean. Okay, so we're gonna start frying this. Oh my god, oh my god, the oil! Okay, it's calming down. Yeah, don't be an idiot like me and just leave and leave the pot really hot. Okay, fry this up for maybe like a minute or two. So that's looking nice and browned. And now I'm gonna add a bit of onion. I'm only adding this amount of onion because I really wanna prioritize the tofu. I wanna make sure that all the tofu fits. You don't need to cook the onions for long because they're just gonna get nice and soft and mushy once we add the hot water. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my kimchi. This is by Twins Kimchi. It's pretty good. All right. Okay. I would like some more kimchi, so I'm gonna just add some in this rogue Tupperware. And now I'm gonna try and pour as much kimchi juice as possible. Now I'm just gonna let this fry for another minute or two. 
I just boiled some water in this kettle and I'm gonna add, I don't know, like a cup, two cups of it. So we're gonna bring this to a boil and we'll come back in seven minutes. So now that it's been chilling, I'm gonna add some hot pepper powder. So I'm just gonna add like a spoonful of this hot pepper powder. And this is just gonna spice things up, make it delicious. I'm also gonna add the tofu. I'm using tongs. And unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to fit this all, but I'm gonna try and squeeze as much as I can. So we've added the tofu in and I let it boil for another like five minutes. Oh, I'm so excited! Oh my God, this looks freaking delicious. I was very generous with the green onions and I just added it for a bit of color, a bit of depth. I'm definitely missing a couple of ingredients in the kimchi jjigae, but honestly, I don't really miss them. I mean, ideally it would have been nice to have some enoki mushrooms in here and you can add like rice cakes in here as well, but we're okay. I've got everything I need. Mm. I know it's like really red and it looks like it would be super spicy, but it's really not. It's pretty mild. The hot pepper flakes, it does add like a tiny, it adds like, I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to like quantify spice, but it doesn't make it that spicy. Mm-hmm. 